Bibles and like to join in with us. We want to welcome those that are joining us by TV, by radio, by live streaming from all around the world. Welcome into our Sunday morning uh, worship service. Um, if you are listening by radio, you can get the entirety of this program by going to www.theshepherdshouse.net. Uh, you can also watch this on YouTube. Uh, there'll be links on the website on uh, connecting with that. If you're watching my Facebook, uh, uh, please consider sharing this on your Facebook page, your timeline, uh, so that uh, we can get this out uh, and hopefully touch even more people's lives, more people's hearts might be touched and blessed and changed by the infallible Word of God. We're not going to be able to change anyone ourselves. It's God's Word. It's the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's going to do the changing, right? Amen. All right, in 1 Kings, we read a story of a man by the name of Elijah. And Elijah uh, was a mighty man of God. And there was the prophets of Baal. And uh, they were trying to uh, say that we you need to follow Baal. He's the God, the real God. And Elijah was trying to let them know, you don't know what you're talking about. The God that I serve is the real God. He's a God that answers by fire. He's a God that hears my prayer. He's a God that has the power to change lives. He has, he's the God that has the power to cause the blind to see, the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, to raise the dead and cause them to breathe again and to live again. That's the God that I serve. And the prophets of Baal was thinking, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Baal is the one that you need to be serving. And Elijah said, we'll just put them to the test. Whichever God answers by fire, that'll be the one we'll all serve. And they said, that sounds like a good deal to me. He said, I'm going to let you go first. So uh, they went first, you know, and they prayed to Baal all day long, on out in the time for the evening sacrifice. They were still praying, and finally Elijah said, where's your God? Is he gone on a long journey? Perhaps he's dull of hearing, and he's not, not able to hear you. They started cutting themselves, and the blood was gushing out as they were trying to worship and to get Baal to answer. But Baal didn't answer because there wasn't a Baal. But the God that Elijah was a praying to, Jehovah Jireh, the God of our salvation, the God that shall prevail, the God that shall provide, amen, the living God, amen, the great I am, as he told Moses, when Moses said, who do I say has sent me, by what authority do I come and tell Pharaoh uh, to let your people go, he said, I am that I am, tell them that I am has sent you, so he was going to start praying then to I am, amen, praise the Lord, and he did, and let's pick up and start reading now in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse number 36, and it says, And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and, Is and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art the God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel, excuse me, top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth. 
and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And he came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And he came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel, and the hand of the Lord was upon was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Let's turn into the New Testament now, into Romans chapter number 8, some of my favorite scripture. It says in Romans 8 verse 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not uh, with him also freely give us all things. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's pray. Father, in the loving name of Jesus, come in before you once again this day, asking you, Lord, to hide us behind the shadow of the cross, that no glory would come to me in the flesh, but, Father, that the mighty name of Jesus might be praised, uplifted, and glorified, Father, from now and forevermore. Asking you, Lord, to bless in this service, touch the hearts of everyone that's here this morning and others that are joining us, Lord through TV, radio, and live streaming. Father, we pray this morning that, Lord, you would touch the hearts of those that are lost and undone, those that are not prepared to meet you. I pray, Father, you would draw them and compel them to call upon the name of the Lord today before it's everlasting and eternally too late. Father, I pray today for those that are broken. Lord, they would bring their brokenness, Lord, and lay it at the feet of Jesus. Lord, that they would bring their troubles and their heartaches, Lord, and give it to you. Father, I pray, God, that every challenge that we face, Lord, that we might be led by your Spirit and that we might be guided, Lord, by your Word and that we might, Father, always, Lord, be found giving you, Lord, a, con a charge of all of these things, uh, uh, Father, Lord, that we have need of. Father, we just pray today that you would uh, just bless mightily. And Father, we know without the anointing of the Holy Ghost, it would be impossible for us to preach. We pray, dear God, that you would expand this ministry. And Father, that you would touch us, Lord, as we continue to do your work. And in Jesus' name, we humbly pray and ask all these things. Amen. The title of the message today is, Try the Lord, for He is Good. Try the Lord, for He is Good. Uh, here in 
uh, Romans, we see in chapter number 8 that the Apostle Paul was teaching uh, the folks in Rome as he was writing uh, the Roman letter there that no matter what happens, uh, in all things uh, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus and nothing can separate us from the love of God. I'm thankful that whatever I do, the Lord is with me when I've committed my heart and my life completely to him. When I have surrendered everything and I have to the Lord and for all of those, amen, that will call upon the name of the Lord, those that are born again of the spirit and the power of God, amen, you've got the promises of God following you. It doesn't matter what it is, amen, that happens to you. We've got the comfort, amen, and knowing that the Lord is going to go with us and that all things work to the good, amen, for the called, amen, according to his word, amen. Uh, those that, amen, that has things uh, that happens to them, the Lord understands uh, and he sees that. Here was a time, amen, when Elijah, amen, needed the Lord and Elijah had the opportunity, amen, to use, uh, amen, what God, uh, amen, had showed him uh, that he had power to do in the past uh, and he knew that there was no limit uh, to the God that he served and those of us that are walking in in the spirit uh, and not walking in the flesh, we know that when something happens, uh, amen, we can say there's going to be something every day. I can testify to that. Amen, it's either a flat tar or ye cake falls. Amen, it's either a wind that breaks out or your ladder don't work. Amen, say everything that you have will have to be adjusted pretty much, amen, on a day-to-day -day basis. I told them this morning in the early service, I'm so thankful I didn't have to adjust this chair when I sit down this morning. That's the only thing I can think of that I hadn't had to work on this week. It's just been one of them weeks. Amen. Things is going to happen. But yes, through everything, I was more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I am an overcomer. You are an overcomer. Amen. Elijah knew that the God he served could not fail. The God he served uh, could not lie. The God he served uh, would not let him down. Uh, and he knew that there's no test uh, too great, uh, amen, for the living God. And he knew that the prophets of Baal, amen, even though they were serving Baal with all of their heart, they were serving a God that did not exist. Uh, amen, just as Elijah knew that the God he served was real, he was just as confident that the God that they served, uh, amen, Baal, did not exist. Uh, it was just a figment uh, of man's imagination. Uh, it was just an image, uh, amen, that they were trying to worship uh, because it didn't know the real God. Uh, amen, the world today is seeking after, amen, help, uh, amen, in all the wrong places. Uh, they're looking, uh, amen, for help, uh, amen, through crank uh, and crack uh, and meth. Uh, they're looking. Amen for joy. Amen to come through beer and alcohol. Amen and whiskey uh, and all these other things. Uh, amen when it's false hope. Uh, the, the, there's nothing going to get them through the situation that they're facing except Jesus Christ. Uh, there's nothing except relying upon the word of God. Amen to get us through. It doesn't matter. Amen what happens. Uh, amen I want to send a message out. Uh, amen to the rest of the world. I've got ups, I've got downs, but I've made it. Why don't you try Jesus? He's good if you'll serve the Lord. Amen, I tried the world, and the world let me down. My friends let me down. Any y'all ever been let down by friends? Well, if you hadn't, your family did. <laughs> Amen, or both of them did. Uh, amen, one or the other. Friends, the most of the time, uh, is only there. Amen, when you've got money, or you've got drugs, uh, or you've got alcohol, or you're doing something that they can get some type of benefit out of. If they think they're going to move three or four times this year, they'll be friendly if you've got a truck and a trailer. 
Amen. They'll be friends uh, for a little while. Amen. But God loves you. Uh, amen. Through every situation. Uh, amen. If you got money, he loves you. And if you don't have nothing but two nickels left, uh, amen, to rub together and you owe one of them to Uncle Sam, he'll still be there with you. Amen. Through everything. Uh, I'm thankful today you don't have to be poor. Amen. To serve the Lord. Uh, but I'm thankful if you are poor, you've got a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. There wasn't a prosperity preacher around, amen, to tell Elijah uh, to just sow your seed uh, into this offering uh, and send it in to me, and I'll send the fire down. But oh, Elijah knows that to God that he'd been praying to, amen, that been performing miracles, uh, amen, that he could call upon without money, without price, uh, amen, without any type, uh, amen, of requirements, uh, amen, by man. Uh, he knew that he wasn't going to let him down, uh, and he knew that there was no competition. Uh, amen. How many of those? Uh, amen. There's no competition uh, to a buggy over here with no horse. Amen. And it is to a nice Lincoln Continental. Amen. One of them without a horse ain't going to get anywhere. That other one, you know, it's got a lot of a horses under the hood, and it's going to get you wherever you need to go. Now, who are you going to put your dependence in? Or, amen. If you had to go from here to California, would you want to crawl up in that buggy with no horse? Or would you want to get in that car, amen, with a tank full of gas uh, and a radio turned over on uh, good gospel music, uh, amen, and your Bible sitting beside you with an air conditioner on, uh, amen, and, and head on down the road. Uh, now, which one of them would you have confidence in, uh, amen? He was just thinking, uh, boy, them has got their confidence in that old buggy over there. They're going to be a setting still. But the one I got my confidence in, I'm going to roll the window down and let my hair fly in the breeze. As I'm heading on to California, ain't you glad that there's a God, amen, that you can feel? Amen, there's a way, uh, amen, that you can get through this world. Uh, say, amen, somebody here not long ago said this is a rough old world. Uh, amen, it's a rough old world, but I got a tender hand, uh, amen, that's holding me and uh, carrying me through everything that I face uh, and all the bumps uh, and the obstacles. Uh, amen, I may not jump up the first day that I get knocked down, uh, amen but I'm going to get up, amen, and I'm going to go on, and I'm going to be like a Timex watch. I'm going to take a licking and I keep on a ticking. I'm going to be knocked down, amen, and bruised, and I'm going to get up and shout, amen, and praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I fell and twisted my hand uh, last night. Uh, I'm fine, uh, so don't give me no sympathy. Amen. It's going to be better in two or three days. Uh, but this morning, I'm shaking hands with people with my left hand uh, because this one's a little bit sore. I got to clapping, uh, wanting to clap hands a while ago, and I couldn't do it, and finally I slapped that shoulder. Amen. It wasn't clapping hands, uh, but I slapped that shoulder hard enough to where it made a noise, and it done the same thing. Uh, where there's a will, there's a way. Where there's a termination, uh, amen, you can get out of the rut. Uh, you can get out of the hole. Uh, you can get out of the situation, uh, and God will give you strength, uh, amen, to go on. Amen. My wife had a stroke back in February. For a long time, she couldn't do anything. That hand would draw up, and she had to take this hand and push it down. She had a terrible time. She couldn't bathe herself. She couldn't clothe herself. It was terrible. I waited on her. She was just an invalid nearly. I had some of the church folks, some of the ladies came, stayed with her for the first month. Uh, I couldn't leave her alone. It was something else. But right now today, she is so much better. Amen. She dressed herself completely this morning. Uh, everything uh, by herself this morning. Uh, I had a, a bad hand today. It ain't going to be that way in three more days. But anyway, I don't know what about the number three, but it's going to be better in three days. Y'all can write that down if you want to. Amen. But what I'm saying it is, uh, amen, today she can bathe herself. She can clothe herself. You ought to see her put on her undergarments with one hand. Amen. They're rolled and twisted. Uh, amen. But she gets them on. Uh, every now and then I'll have to straighten up a strap for her or something like that. And I said, you are amazing uh, how you can roll that stuff on your body uh, and get it on with one hand. Uh, now then that hand's beginning to turn uh, back in two just a little bit. Uh, I 
told you it ain't going to be long. She's going to be doing this. Uh, amen. God's going to bring her out. You've got to have a determination. you got to believe in the God that you're praying to. Oh, I want that preach. Amen. So when you call upon him, uh, amen, you're not hoping for results, uh, but you're telling everybody, you can go first because your God's dead. You can take uh, them four barrels of water. You just get it four times uh, and pour it over the sacrifice. Uh, dig you a ditch, uh, and we'll just waterlog that thing because the God I'm talking to, he'll burn it up. Uh, he'll even get the rocks uh, that you built the altar out of, uh, and they won't even be. Have you ever seen dust burn? I never did, but here was one time, uh, amen, that the dust burned up, uh, the rocks burned up. Uh, it licked up all the water out of the trench, uh, amen, all of those barrels of water, uh, amen, because the God that he prayed to, uh, amen, answered by fire. After Baal's uh, uh, prophets had prayed and prayed and the people had watched uh, and nothing didn't happen, he said, now y'all get out of the way. I'm gonna pray for the same sacrifice, uh, amen, but I'm gonna pray to the real God. Uh, I'm gonna pray to my God, uh, the Lord, Lord of heaven, uh, the great I am, uh, Jehovah Jireh, the God that shall supply. Amen. Jehovah Nissi, amen. The God, uh, amen. Listen, folks, we can, uh, amen, pray to him and believe uh, and know that God's going to come through for us. Uh, amen. So, therefore, amen. He said, Y'all get back out of the way. Let me show you how this is done. He fell down on his face uh, and, and I put our, on his knees, uh, amen, begin to pray. He said, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, uh, the God of Jacob, uh, the God that's proved himself uh, all down through the generations. Uh, light this fire, oh God. Uh, send the fire down from heaven. And all at once, here come the fire. And when it hit, it was all consumed. Uh, no dust left, no rocks, no water, no sacrifice, uh, no wood. It was all gone. Uh, amen. And every one of them, uh, amen, rose up. Uh, amen. Elijah said, now kill them false preachers. Uh, boy, uh, they, uh, I'm telling you what, the TV evangelists better be glad that Elijah's not alive today. He t amen. Because he'd have us take them down to the brook kitchen. Amen. And cut their heads off. Amen. Mean old preacher, ain't it? But the truth is the truth. Amen. He got rid of the false preachers. He got rid of the false prophets. Amen. You're not going to deceive these people anymore. Amen. It's either all or nothing. Amen. And when I set this up, I let you go first. It was either all or nothing at all. He said, I'm going to serve the only God, the real God, the God that's proved himself, or I'm not going to serve any God. Amen. Like God of Abraham. And Isaac and Jacob, and he's going to help me out of this uh, just like he's helped me out of everything. Now, I'm sure old Elijah had never seen anybody call the fire down from heaven before. Amen. And I'm, I'm preaching to somebody. Amen. You're going through a trial, and you're going through a test right now, and you've never seen God move uh, like he's getting ready to move. But because of your faith uh, and because of your endurance uh, and because, uh, amen, that you've cried out to him, uh, amen, he's going to come through for you. And you're going to see him answer by fire. And you're going to know it's a God that you called upon. You're going to know, uh, amen, it's not Blue Cross and Blue Shield that got you out of it. You're going to know it's not Humana or Obamacare, amen, that got you through it. You're going to know, uh, amen, that it's not Dr., uh, what was it, Dr. Webb or whatever it was, his on TV years ago, I forgot what. Well, there you go. Thank you. Some of you 1980 uh, TV or 70 watchers uh, remembers him. Uh, amen. Dr. Dr. Welby's not going to get you out of it. Uh, amen. Dr. Chad's not going to get you out of it. Uh, amen. It's going to take the Lord. Uh, amen. To get you through the situation. Uh, amen. You're going to know it wasn't. Uh, amen. The opiums that you took. Uh, amen. To help you with pain. Uh, amen. You're going to know. Uh, amen. I don't take the opiums to help me with pain. Uh, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Uh, did your hand hurt? Uh, it finally did. And I finally got up, uh, this will blow your mind. I took two heavy strength uh, pain relievers, Tylenol, and I went back to bed. I said, if Tylenol can't do it, and I'm, I'm not getting paid, uh, amen, from Tylenol, amen. <laughs> it's just because it didn't have but one Advil, and I decided I'd rather have two Tylenol and one Advil. 
So I, t- I took two of them Tylenol at 2.30 this morning, and I said, Lord, this old preacher's going to have to get a nap somewhere or another uh, for time to preach three times tomorrow. I'm going to need your strength, uh, and I'm not a uh, young chicken anymore. Lord, help me. Ease this pain off. Uh, it eased off enough that I could go to sleep, and I felt good this morning. Uh, amen. When I got up, uh, amen, I need to hurt my hand more often. Uh, amen. Because I believe I got as much sleep as I usually did. About three hours is enough for anybody. Hey man, after you turn 50, hey man, you don't get much more than that. Hey Amen, because you're hurting on the left one night and on the right the next, and you split the middle of the next night. Hey Amen, then you rotate. Hey Amen, there's always something going on. But there's a God, hey Amen, that helps me through every, every situation. There's a God that I can pray to. Hey Amen, he's not dull of hearing. Hey Amen, he's not blind. Hey Amen, he's not been misled or confused. He's not a politician, and thank God. That's another sermon for another time. Hey Amen, he's not a public speaker. Hey Amen, that gets up, amen, and motivates the people. He's a God that sends down the fire if you got faith when you believe. He's a God, amen, that changes the situation, something that you've never been through before, something bigger than you ever saw, something greater than any dream, amen, the biggest monster that you could ever dream of. He can step with his foot and squash it like you would a a doodle bug, amen, the power, amen, of God, how he comes into our lives because we pray because that we believe and because we take actions, amen, with our prayer. And we are determined, amen, we got more people that gives up. They stop praying because God don't answer them yesterday or before. They will not try until the Lord gets there. Now here was Elijah, amen, after he'd seen the prior, uh, the fire come down from heaven. Uh, he'd already prayed, uh, amen, for the heavens to be shut up. Uh, amen, there wouldn't be any uh, rain come for three years. Uh, amen, and it wasn't, it was bone dry. And he went, he said, now uh, let, let's go up to Carmel. And he said, I'm gonna get up top of Carmel here. I prayed the fire down, I'm fixing to pray the rain down. Hey man, so he got on his down and got his head between his knees, uh, and he uh, he told his servant uh, to go up to the top of the mountain or go up and look over the sea. Excuse me, go look toward the sea and tell me if you see anything. He got down and prayed, and he come back and said, "No, there not anything." So he done that seven times, and man, that last time he come back and said, "There's a cloud." Just one little old cloud, just about the size of a man's hand. He said, get ready, the rain's on its way. Get ready, because I got through. Get ready, I've been heard. Get ready, the sign of the rain, amen, it's on its way. He told Ahab, you get your chariot, you head on to Jezreel. No, Ahab, I can see him there and picture him in my eyes. He is a whooping them horses, amen, running that chariot as hard as he can. I can see them, their nostrils wide open, a pain for breath. They were trying to get their breath as he kept whooping them. Looking behind him as the black clouds began to roll as the rain that Elijah had prayed. Ahab had already seen this man of God in action and knew that when he prayed, something's going to happen. Amen. And them black clouds is coming. I got to get to Jezreel. And all at once, right beside him, come old Elijah up on foot. Amen. Now, this is scripture. Go back and read it. I just read it to you a minute ago. Ahab, he rode. Jezreel, the Bible says, the hand of the Lord was upon him. Here come old Elijah along beside Jezreel, beside Ahab. He's a whooping them horses. Elijah run up and said, now hurry up, Ahab. I'm going to go on in front of you. The hand of the Lord's on me, and I don't want to run over you, but I'm going on to Jezreel. You whoop them horses and come on as soon as you can. Amen. Uh, here went old uh, uh, Ahab uh, uh, whooping them horses. And amen. There was Elijah. Amen. I can see him there in Jezreel laying back with a glass of tea. Amen. Done called his breath and said, Well, you finally got here. Them horses are a little bit slow, ain't they? What they needed was a God that's on my side. Uh, amen. With them. Uh, amen. It'd be better than that Lincoln Continental that I'm talking about. Got them all them horses on the hood. Amen. We need something uh, amen, a lot stronger than the horses. We need the faith that we can have in a God that's bigger than the situation. Brother Jimmy, I've never seen God move that way before. 
Praise the Lord. You're getting ready to see him move good. If you've got faith uh, and you will believe. Uh, amen. Here, Elijah never had prayed the fire down before. I bet you he had never run to Jezreel on foot and had not run a bunch of horses before either. It just hadn't been seen, but it was done. There's been things that's been seen that never have been done before. I've seen the Lord bring me through a lot of situations. I faced a lot of disappointments, but God's brought me through. Sometimes he bring me through the situation in a way that bettered me, that I thought he was going to kill me. But God brought me through it. I survived, and when the smoke of the battle was over, amen, I had more as far as monetary things, amen, and I was better off than I ever been before. Sometimes uh, amen, we have to face uh, amen, the mother of all challenges uh, amen, in order to be able to see the glory of God and how that the Lord uh, is not emotional like we are. He doesn't get upset. Uh, He is the rock. Uh, Amen. He is the anchor that holds uh, in the midst of the storm. Uh, He is our protector. Uh, He helps us through everything. See, when you see something and I see something, uh, amen, that comes up in our lives, uh, we panic. We say, oh, good gracious, I ain't never seen nothing like that before. Man, there was a bill right there. I ain't never seen as many zeros in all my life. <laughs> Got two or three a comma or two in it. How in the world am I going to? Now, when they go putting commas in them bills, I don't like them. I can take the decimal points pretty good. It's in commas, Anthony, that gets me every time. <laughs> It especially it don't take my one comma to get me. But I'm thankful that God has a way, even when there's a comma in, in the statement, amen, he will be able to help you, amen, through the situation. Amen, God will move in a way that you never expected him to move. He'll move upon someone. He'll cause a, a number of events to come together, and it'll look like a domino effect. This happened and that happened, and something else happened. See him fingers loosening up here. You just wait two more days, three more days. Amen. I told y'all, I'm telling you folks. Anyway, but the God that I serve, amen, is a God that answers by fire. Amen. And the fire purifies. The fire burns up. Amen. The chaff and the flesh and the negativity in your life. I'm preaching to somebody today. You've got faith. You've got faith the size of a grain of mustard seed. And then the Lord is going to move in your area. But you've got, amen, just about as much doubt as a mountain that's in front of you. How can I have faith and doubt at the same time? It takes a special person, but we've all done it. We've had faith. I heard somebody one time say, I know that God can do anything. I'm just not sure that he will. You had not got the faith yet. Amen. Elijah didn't fall down on his face. Amen. And say, Lord, if you're in the right mood today and you decide that you want to bless me, I sure would count it mighty good uh, if you just come down here and light this far. But now, if you don't, I know it ain't your will. And I'll take whatever happens, and I'll learn to live with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can learn to live with that if you want to. Amen. But I'm going to learn to pray. And I'm going to learn to believe. I'm going to build my faith. Amen. When I need healing, the word says, by his stripes, we are healed. If I don't receive it, it's Jimmy's fault. Amen. Are you trying to say if I don't receive it, it's my fault too? You're getting right in there now. We're preaching together. Amen. We're getting a real good revelation uh, and an understanding. Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by laying out of church. No, that ain't right. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by The Word of God. We need to eat the Word of God. We need to read the Word of God. We need to be around the Word of God. Preach, amen, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen, not some dried up, amen, preacher that ain't never been called in the first place. Amen, where the fire of God is, where somebody that's been born again can preach to you about being born again. Amen. Did you know I would be the worst person you would ever want to give instructions on how to fly a skyrocket? I wouldn't even know how to get the door open and turn the thing on, let alone fly it. You sure wouldn't want to hear me give you directions on how to fly a spaceship. 
Amen. I don't want to hear somebody tell me how to get to Jesus when they don't know him themselves. Amen. We need to have a born-again experience of the power of God. you got to know that I've changed from life unto death, or from death unto life, excuse me. Yeah, they've got to know and you've got to know, amen, that what used to be in my heart is not there anymore, and there's peace, and there's joy, and there's love. I love everybody. Well, i got one or two amens. Amen. Some says, well, I love most of them. <sighs> I don't believe we're going to make it by loving a big, uh, I don't believe when we get before the Lord, we're going to, the Lord says, you didn't love everybody. You can say, now, Lord, I loved a great big pile of them, but some of them I just couldn't get in there and love. I don't believe, it. <laughs> I don't believe that's going to pass on the day of judgment to you that I love the most of them, except a handful of idiots out of you. <laughs> Got to love all of them. Amen. You gotta love every one of them. Amen. Your mother-in-law, your father-in-law. Amen. Your brother, your sister-in-law, your brother-in-law. Amen. Your neighbor across the street. Amen. The one that poked you in the eye. The one that turned their hogs in on your corn. Amen. The one. Amen. That stole your watermelon. Amen. The one that beat you out. Amen. Of things. The one that sued you. Amen. And tried to take your shirt off your back. Amen. Because they tripped over a matchstick in the parking lot. Amen. All of those people you got to love them. You got to forgive them. Amen. You got to pray, oh God, don't do to them what I think you're going to do to them because it's going to be bad. Hold back that fire. Don't burn up my enemies. Have mercy on my enemies as I forgive them and love them. Somebody run and get the door right quick. All the oxygen just got sucked out of the room. <gasps> Amen. Sometimes it's not easy, amen, to love the unlovable. Amen. But God gives you the ability. You can't do it in the flesh. You can't sit down in a chair and say, mm, I'm going to meditate. Mm, mm, I'm going to get in the right frame of mind. Mm. And after 10 minutes, you still say, I'm still going to kill him. Hey, man, you're not going to get there. Hey, man, it's going to take prayer. It's going to take the love of, I don't know where I'm getting this out. I do too, but I hadn't thought of this before. But the love of the Lord, uh, hey, man, will get us, uh, hey, man, to where we can love uh, and forgive uh, and have the ability. Why not try to love them? Why not try, hey, amen, the Lord, for he is good. Why not try the right way? Hey, amen, alcohol and drugs. Uh, hey, amen, hanging around with the wrong bunch of people. Uh, hey, amen, hanging around. Uh, hey, amen, the losers. Uh, hey, amen, this and area. <sighs> Every area has a group of losers in it. Barron County's got a large one. Hey, man, I live here. It's got a bunch of winners in it, too. Hey, man, don't you sell us short. We got some good Christian people right here in Barron County. Got some good business people right here in Barron County. Hey, man, but we got some losers, too. Hey, man, them that whines, I've worked a lot of them down through the years whine and complain and don't like anything they're lazy want something for nothing and all that kind of stuff uh, amen and you can find out them losers uh, is like a pack of wolves uh, they all hate together amen you have one church uh, amen give them uh, pay, help pay their water bill and you'll have 50 call them the next week cause the word gets around uh, I tell you what you go down there to Wilson's Chapel I just made that name up. I don't think there's a Wilson's Chapel around in this area. And, I, and that old preacher down there, man, he'd give me $25. Well, praise God. I feel like I'm getting into the spirit. I'm going to pick up the phone and whine a little bit, and I'm going to get me my light bill paid or water bill paid. But what I'm saying is, uh, amen, the losers, uh, amen, they, they protect each other, amen. You can get around people, amen, that deals in drugs, and they'll know each other when they walk up on the parking lot, amen, because they've dealt with each other. And some of them can just have that feeling. I can tell by looking at you, you're like me, you're a loser. We're following Baal. We're listening to the craving for drugs that keeps speaking to my heart. We're listening to the craving of alcohol. We're listening to the craving uh, of all this stuff uh, that's out there in the world. Uh, and I know that you're craving the world like I'm craving the world. Uh, I ain't got anything. Uh, I'm going to get it off of somebody some way or another if I can. But I'm not going to be dependable. I'm not going to pay my bills. I'm not going to be good in the public with other people because I'm a loser. All I know how to do is to lose 
and to get what you got. I'm going to stop here in just a moment. But I've shared this story a few times down through the years. And a preacher friend of mine told me here a while back, said, I don't know if I would have shared that story or not. Well, see, I'm not a vain preacher, so it didn't bother me. Amen. Just to tell you, amen, some things that happened in the past. Many years ago, how many knows that rats will get into anything? How many knows that rats will get in the feed store and they'll eat two or three bites out of every sag, a bag? Or they get in the grocery store and eat one bite out of every bag of sugar and you've got to throw it all away. You could have fed them a, a, half, a whole cup full of sugar would have fed them if they run 10 bags, ruin 10 bags in order to get that cup that they ate that night. That's the way rats is. That's the way that losers are. Many years ago, back before the Lord called me to preach, before I got saved, we had bought a little farm there in Allen County. And the people that lived there before us were real good people. They were very clean uh, people. Uh, they were very honorable people. In fact, they were kin to me. Um, but anyway, distant cousins. But anyway, they had some uh, grain stored in the barn, and the barn was close to the house. Well, we let that house sit empty for almost a week before I knew that they had moved out. Me and Jenny went in. It was sometime around, uh, was it around Thanksgiving? or I think around Thanksgiving that year. Uh, we moved in, and uh, we got what stuff we could get in the house, and we only were able to get one bed. We didn't have time to get the other one. I said, I'm wore out. And I said, you think we can tough it out on one of them twin beds? She said, well, they ain't neither one of us too big back at that time. One of us has got greater since then. But anyway, uh, we, uh, we said, we're going to go to bed, go to sleep in the guest bedroom right next to the kitchen. So we did. We went to bed, went to sleep. I turned, or turned the lights out. I hadn't much more than rolled over. Everything nice and quiet because it was in a peaceful area, real quiet out in the middle of nowhere. It sounded like a herd of buffalo coming in that kitchen. I said, man, what's going on? Somebody done broke in our house. I said, Jenny, you hear that? She said, yeah, I hear it. Who is it? What is it? I said, I don't know. I said, I got the shotgun still down at, uh, at where it, my other house where I moved from. I said, I ain't moved it up here. I ain't even got a baseball bat. So I heard the noise again. I said, the only thing I know to do is jump up. So I jumped up. The closest light was a kitchen. I flipped on the kitchen light, and there's about 12 or 14 rats. One went this way, one that way, and I know they went in cabinets, and you ain't never seen anything like it in your life. I said, oh, good gracious. I see what it is. They came from the barn to the house. Nobody's been here this week. Oh, we got a mess. So I turned the light off, and I said, I scared them to death now, and I went to bed. Hadn't had the light off three minutes till they started again, just like they did before. I picked up my boot, and I whirled that thing uh, uh, through the doorway, wham, again the wall. It got quiet. Couldn't hear anything. I said, boy, I done scared the snot out of them. They won't, they, they plumb in another county by now. Oh, no, they wouldn't. They just like the devil. Hey, Amen. You rebuke him, and he'll be back in 10 minutes. Hey, Amen. That's the same way losers are, too, sometimes. <sighs> hey, Amen. So anyway, uh, I, I, we waited there for a minute, and I said, let me get up and go turn the light on. So I went and turned the light on. Here they went, one this way, one that way, all of them out of sight. And I said, I'm going to leave that light on all night. I said, we're going to sleep with the kitchen light on. They didn't give no trouble anymore all night long. And the moral to the story is uh, where there's darkness, uh, the, lights will, the, the mice will play or the rats will play. When you turn the light of the Lord on in our lives, uh, the losers decides, I don't like you too good. Uh, amen. The rats decides, I believe I'm going to leave you alone. Uh, amen. The whiners, when you realize, they realize, I'm not putting up with your lip. Uh, I'm not putting up with your attitude. You either change your attitude or you work somewhere else. They'll either leave or they'll straighten up and change your mood real quick. Amen. You got to put your foot down. You got to turn the light on. Amen. In order for the rats, amen, to understand, amen, there's something to fear because your sins, amen, will be exposed. So the next night or next day, I went down to my friend, Mr. Garrison, that lived down the end of the road, and I got my, I got, I borrowed a rat trap from him. I got that rat trap. And he said, now it's got a barbed wire on it. He said, you tie that barbed wire, they won't break it. Rats is bad about breaking the strings and things of that nature. He said, they won't break this barbed wire. He said, uh, they're coming into your kitchen, huh? I said, yeah. He said, tie it around your table leg. 
good and tight. He said, they won't take that trap unless they take that kitchen table through a hole. He said, I don't believe they're going to do that. And I said, I don't believe they will either. So I tied that wire around that real good, around that table leg. I put me some cheese on that thing. I sat down, and we turned on the television. I turned all the lights off in the house except the TV, and they were playing Wilbur uh, the Rat. Willard, yeah, Willard the rat was what that, that's the truth, that really happened at the same time. It wasn't just a little bit, I heard something go, pow, I said, ha, ha, got to you, little devil, and I jumped up and turned the light on, he was in the trap going, like that right there, I said, he'll be gone in a minute. I got rid of him, I took him out and threw him over in the field, uh, uh, right beside the, uh, the yard there, I went back in, took a paper towel and cleaned that blood off and put me another piece of cheese and went back and went to watching Willard again. It wasn't but a few minutes, it was pow. I said, I got another one. He meant I'd done that for two nights in a row, and that stopped all my troubles. Sometimes you've got to get the rats out of your life. you got to get the things, amen, that you don't need out of your life. And then, then the love of the Lord can come in, and the joy of the Lord can come in. Amen, here was Elijah. Elijah wouldn't commit an adultery and a lying and a shacking up and living with somebody, amen, not married and doing all this other kind of stuff and a cussing and a, a carrying on and uh, uh, falsifying papers and is there anything else I missed? And all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> he was living right. Uh, he loved the Lord. Uh, he had a relationship with God uh, and he knew that when I talk to him, uh, he's going to listen uh, not because that I've got clout uh, but because that I love him uh, and he loves me uh, and when I call upon his name and I believe uh, something's going to happen. And that's exactly what happened. And then the Lord just kept blessing Elijah's life. I thought many times that to be there and see him pray the fire down would have been a sight out of this world. But to see him run along beside Ahab, whooping them horses, I don't know which one was the greatest. I'd have loved to seen both of them. That just stirs my heart. I know how fast a horse can run. I couldn't even start to keep up with the dust, let alone a horse. But see, the hand of the Lord was upon him. The hand of the Lord was on him in such a way. They ain't gonna tell him how fast Elijah run. If they'd had a speedometer on him, he, I mean, they may have clocked him at 90 miles an hour. Who knows how fast he's going, but he's moving on. And that'll preach. The Lord to get you fast from one place to another. He can heal your hand in as much as three days. Amen. Amen. I was... I'm going to tell this last story, and I'll be done. I was up at Burger King one night last year, and there were some friends that goes to church here in Glasgow. Me and Jenny met them for after church at their church, and we ate a hamburger together. And I had hurt uh, my leg, my knee, or my foot. Was it my foot? My foot, yes. Yeah, I hurt my foot really bad. And I just I was just limping like this, and I had to hold on to the wall, and it took me forever to get to the car. And anyway, on the outside of the restaurant, as we was leaving, they said, "We're going to pray for you, brother Jimmy." I said, "You having a hard time?" I said, "By Wednesday night, it's going to be a whole lot better." They smiled, and they said, "Yes, we'll believe that with you." I said, "It will be." I come in Wednesday night, and I wasn't even limping. That's the truth. That happened. I got witnesses. That's not me making it up. I've got witnesses. I got witnesses from other church. A man can bear witness. Now, it wasn't just because I was so good that I said that. It's because that's what I felt in my heart. By Wednesday night, I'm going to have to get up and preach and walk all over the place because I can't sit still. And I can't see me walking like I am right now. I can't even get out and get into the car. So the God that I serve is going to answer my prayer. The God that I serve is going to anoint me. The God that I serve is going to let me walk all over the church and dance if I need to. I don't know where I did that night or not, but I had a good time. Amen. The Lord really did bless. Where's your faith? Well, that might could happen. You ain't there yet. Well, I believe it's going. I believe it could happen. You're still not there. Well, I know for a fact it's going to happen. Now you're getting warmer. Now you're about to get there. See, there's no, you can't just, some says, well, just speak it, and it's going to happen. If that was going to happen, I'd have a full head of hair, and I'd be rich. I'd have to have three banks to hold my money. Just not going to happen. Amen? Because I know you've got to work for a living. I know you've got to be honest. And I know in my heart, if I believe it, 
I can, I can say I believe that it's going to come to pass. But just coming out of my mouth is not going to get anything done. Back to the scripture I already quoted. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Stand with me if you would, please. That's the message for today. If you've got a need of any kind, this altar is open. Try the Lord for he is good. Try the Lord. If you tried the world, why don't you try Jesus? If you tried drugs, why don't you try Jesus? If you tried putting your faith in people, why don't you try Jesus? If you tried putting your faith in alcohol, why don't you try Jesus? If you put your faith in playing the lottery, and there's many out there that gets hooked on that stuff, I'd rather put my money in the offering plate because I know there's a dividends is out of this world. Amen, and the Lord will bless. I'm not saying that you'll always have a big pile of money in your pocket, but I'll tell you one thing, your grocery bill will be paid. You won't have to beg from churches. <laughs> you won't have to be calling somebody and pleading for your light bill to be paid. There'll be a way made. It may be just as somebody, you've heard this old saying, as scarce as hen's teeth. Well, money might get scarce as hen's teeth, but the Lord will build you a new hen house. It'll all be all right. God will take care of the situation. There'll be a way made where there seems like there is no way. I could tell you story after story after story. I wasn't rich, but I had just enough to get me through every situation. God will take care of you. God's people don't have to beg. Church attenders sometimes has to. I'll let you all think on that for just a minute. But those that love the Lord, you won't have to beg. You may not be a millionaire. You may not have enough money, as old saying, to burn a wet mule. But you'll have enough to get his tail hot. You'll have enough to get started and get you through the whole situation. While they get us a song of invitation, those watching by live streaming, by television, radio, God bless you. Have a good day. And uh, tune us back in tonight at 6.45 p.m.